Shem Hashem Naaser and Atzliach. This week's parsha is Devarim. We wish everybody a meaningful fast. That is Saturday and Sunday's Tisha Be'av, and we're recording the Lulun Nishpat Avi Mori Shlomo Chaim Ben David. His yurt side is coming up on Monday and Tuesday night. We know that this week's parsha is Devarim. We start the fifth book of the Torah, and Moshe, Moshe this whole parsha, is chastising reprimanding and providing reproof to the Jews in the hope, in the honest hope that they don't make the same mistakes they made during the 40 years that they made God mad on a constant basis. And the Torah is very particular. It says all the Jews had to be present at this sermon, at this last stand where Moshe wants to teach the word of God and remind them of their mistakes and Rashi says, why daber el kol b'nei Yisrael? Ela devarim asher diber Moshe el kol b'nei Yisrael be'var yarden. Why did every single mingled Jew have to be present there? Because if only some of the Jews would have been there and some of them would have been out eating coffee or in the marketplace, the ones that were, weren't there with their tremendous chutzpah would have told the ones there, why? You were just quiet and let Moshe say that we are sinners and we're mistaken and we did this mistake. If I was there, I would stand in front of Moshe and say, no, uh, we Jews are perfect. It was God's fault. It was your fault. That's why Moshe said no. This is a last honest evaluation of me, you, the nation of Israel and God. And I'm about to give over the reins of power to Joshua, Yehoshua. So anybody that has any claims against what I'm about to tell you needs to be here. And Rav Simcha Zissel, the great Hebron of Rosh Hashiva says, you see from here that just like we have this unbelievable capacity to be godly and selfless, there is a nuclear toxic energy, poison. The biggest poison that keeps us from getting close to God is Letzanut. That can you imagine Moses is basically on his deathbed. Of course he didn't get weak, but it, the Jews knew that he was dying imminently. And he had a very special message to give them. Even then, they want to make mockery of his words. They want to mimic his words. They want to ridicule his words. Say, nah, he's saying nonsense. I'm perfect. Nobody's better than me. So Moses says, yeah? You say that you, none of you made a mistake. Let me remind you of all the 10 times you guys made God mad. And Moses, like that greatest defense attorney of all time, had to save the Jews from destruction and beseech the Almighty. And this is what Rav Simcha Zissel says, the ultimate goal of this week's Parsha, and possibly Tish Abav, if we want to repent and not fast anymore, is we got to uproot this nuclear poison which is letzanut, mockery, where we believe we're so holy and perfect that anything and everything we do is kadosh, 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 is perfect and holy. And nobody could have the audacity and chutzpah to question our motives and our actions because nobody is more holy and wonderful than us. And anybody that has the audacity to come question our motives and our actions, we're just going to belittle him. The Jews were willing to do that, even to Moshe on his last day of his life. That's why Moshe said, no, come here, I'm going to explain to you one-on-one, -on -one, every single one of you, how you're wrong and I'm right, and don't go back to your foolish ways. And that's why really, why the Mesilat Yeshanim says that the same way that fear of God is that, and learning Musar, Jewish ethics, is that rocket ship that will make us perfect, to self-discipline and godliness and self-improvement, the satanic antidote to that is mockery, let's anut, where everything's a joke, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's this toxic mix of akshanut, am keshe oref, of haughtiness and stubbornness and just deflecting any honest rebuke 
that our prophets give us. And it's for this very reason that the Mesilat Yesharim says, anywhere that you see people that have letzanut, that are not serious about life, that are to thyself be true, like Shakespeare said. They're not willing to be truthful to themselves. Any words of wisdom and self-improvement their father, their mother, their rabbi makes, their prophet makes to them, they make fun of and just laugh it off. They're not serious about life. That is a nuclear poison, spiritual poison you should run away from. Like people would run away and stay away from Chernobyl where there's a nuclear disaster. Because you're never going to get better. And is that not why we're fasting? That we Jews had this element of letzanud in us? That the prophets came and said, listen, don't sleep with each other's wives. Don't have baseless hatred. Don't stomp on the Torah. Have respect for each other. Have respect. Don't do idol worship. Don't kill each other, murder each other. But the Jews thought it was all a joke. God is a joke. The Torah is the joke. The prophet's words are a joke. It's never going to happen. Nothing is serious. Everything is just a bunch of mockery and ridicule and mimicry. And there's no hope for you to get better and repent as long as you have this terrible, terrible um, attribute of letzanut. And I would think that I, I just... One of the most beautiful safarim I read around is the Baalei Tosavod. Right? Yitzhak Mikorbil wrote his own accounting of the 613 commandments. And guess what? He says the ninth commandment of the Torah is we have to circumcise our heart. That heart is, that is like a nuclear-proof concrete that's like a rock. What does it mean we have to circumcise our heart? And this happens even for women. He says, The fool, the person that's here just to stay lazy and stay in his animalistic and retarded way, that person will always hate somebody that gives him positive feedback of how to become a better person and reprimands him. The Torah says, do not kill the messenger. The prophet is a representative of God. The Musar books, the books of Pirkei Avod and all the wonderful Chovat Alavod, Mesirad Yesharim, these are messengers of God. You should love the person that says, You've made mistake X, Y, and Z. Because if you listen to him, you're going to go to the highest echelons of the world to come. You're not going to get the ultimate embarrassment, which is Gehinom. And it says, that's why, can you imagine, the, according to the Samak, the same way it's a mitzvah to put tefillin to keep Rosh Hashanah and Kippur to keep kosher and Shabbat. It's a mitzvah to love the person that reprimands you and to love being reprimanded altogether because we're here to grow. Our, us human beings have a much greater potential than angels. Because angels, the day they're created and the day their entire lifetime, they stay in the same plane. We can become, every day of our life we can become head and shoulders greater than the day before. And that's why he says, Solomon says, And then he says that part of this mitzvah is, We have to throw in that element of power that's in ourselves, which is that element of being stubborn and thinking anything we do is perfect. This is the society we're living in today, people. How can we... Expect the Beit HaMikdash to be... You have no... Who are you to tell me what to do? Everything I'm doing is perfect. Even though everything that's been taught in us in society is mostly anti-Torah, but anything I do is perfect. So nobody has any 
uh, permission to reprimand me. And the Torah is actually telling us the opposite. You should love being reprimanded. The Grazal used to pay somebody to come give him Musar. Because if somebody can point out to you what your deficiency are, like I'm a, I studied to be a CPA, auditing, people pay millions and billions of dollars to companies to audit them so they could become more, um, make more money, become more efficient. Same way, if somebody that loves you is coming reprimanding you like the prophet, you should love him because he, he's making, the reason for your creation is to become closer to God. He's po pointing out your faults and now you can rise head and shoulders above. And I just want to finish with something beautiful from Absado Kagoen, Hakohen. In Sitkatak Sadiq, the great Rebbe from Lublin, that was one of the greatest Jewish thinkers in the last hundreds of years, and the great Mekobel, he says the only way you sin any time, the way the Satan opens the gates of hell and invites you to satanic worship and doing a sin is only if you have an element of letzanut, of mockery in you. That's why the Gemara in Yuma says, Right? The same way, if in your heart of hearts you want to become close to God, God is going to grab your hand and take you up to heaven and become angelic and good. But, if you, God doesn't, God puts the two ways in front of us. If you want to decide that you want to stay stagnant and just go for instant gratification, how does the Gemara learn that God lets you do that like he did for Bil'am. It's a passage in Mishlei, chapter 3. It says, Le'latzim hu yalitz. For the mockerers, he lets them mock. Mevu'ar de'letz hu habavik ne'esal chol mine tum'al. Listen to how deep the words of the great Kohen Gadol from Lublin, Rav Tzadokis. He said that it's impossible to get to evil and sin and the spiritual nuclear waste, the, the path of the Satan, unless you're not serious about life and you have this element of letzanut mockery. So may Hashem help us that the third temple be built come from heaven and bring peace because we need so much peace. There's so much suffering in the world. And the way to bring Mashiach is, I think, the most wonderful thing is let's love the people that want to make us better, not hate them. And uh, God willing... Um, my next class is going to be on the halak halakhic ways, how to reprimand and give musar to people so it doesn't backfire, because that's also one of the most difficult mitzvahs to do properly. May Hashem have mercy on all of us and build our temple. Amen.